In the following lecture, we're going to learn how to write an ionic equation between MgOH2 and HCl. The first thing that uh, we have to do is we need to figure out what the reaction is going to be between MgOH2 and HCl. As you already know that metal hydroxides are bases and HCl is an acid. Acid produces H plus 1 ions, bases, uh, they accept H plus 1 ions. So it's an acid base reaction. Quick pause. Why don't you join our free online classes at megalecture.com where the best teachers in town are going to teach you. Quickly connect with us and join those free trial classes. And when a base reacts with an acid, it's going to end up producing salt and a water molecule. And specifically, not any base, a metal hydroxide, when it reacts with an acid, it produces salt and H2O. So let's try and write the reaction, MgOH2. Mg is 2 plus, OH is minus 1 with HCl. A salt is going to be produced and a water molecule is also going to be produced. I'm going to write the water molecule first. A salt is always produced when the H in the acid gets replaced by the metal ion in magnesium hydroxide. So Mg is going to go and it's going to take its place. So it's going to knock out the H. It's going to neutralize the acid. And acid gets neutralized when the H is lost. So Mg is going to take its place. So Mg is going to come in and put, uh, you're going to put Mg in its place. So it's going to be Mg and Cl. But Mg has a charge of 2 plus, Cl has a charge of minus 1. So if you do crisscross, the ionic uh, formula for this compound is going to be MgCl2. And the other thing that needs to be done is we need to balance this equation. So Mg is balanced already. Cl, there are two Cl's over here. So I'm going to multiply HCl by 2. And the rest of the equation, uh, let's look at the hydrogens. Uh, two hydrogens. There are two hydrogens over here as well. So that's a total of four hydrogens. So I'm going to multiply water by 2. And let's look at, look at the oxygens. There are two oxygens and there are two oxygens over here. So now this equation looks perfectly balanced. The next thing that needs to be... Now, we're, we're trying to write an ionic equation. So these are the steps now. The first thing that you're going to do when you have an equation is you're going to figure out the solubility of uh, the substances. Acids are all aqueous. They're always in the form of a solution. Uh, if you look at magnesium hydroxide, you must remember the solubility table, which is going to be that hydroxides... Only group 1 hydroxides are soluble and those at the bottom of group 2. Magnesium is right at the top of group 2, so it's not soluble. So magnesium hydroxide is a solid. Uh, then let's move to uh, chlorides, MgCl2. All chlorides are soluble except a few, silver, lead and mercury. So uh, magnesium chloride is also soluble. It's going to be in aqueous state. And H2O is going to be a liquid. So that is step 1. Now moving to step 2. Remember this, whenever compounds, acid, base, and salts, whenever they are aqueous, they dissociate. What does that mean? For example, HCl over here is aqueous. Uh, if you mix it, mix it in water, it separates into its ions. The same happens with magnesium chloride. If you uh, mix it in water, it dissociates into its ions. So what we precisely mean by dissociated is that if you mix it in water, it uh, breaks down into H plus 1, as you can see in this visual, H plus 1 and Cl ions, they're going to separate. And water molecules are going to completely surround them and then they're going to mix with water. So they won't be able to get back together again because the water molecules are in between. So whenever you write HCl in aqueous state, basically H plus 1 and Cl ions are dissociated and they are separated from each other. So I'm now going to complete my second step, which is writing the equation in dissociated form. Uh, the, starting with the first one, magnesium hydroxide, that would be written as it is. Let me move this upwards uh, magnesium hydroxide i'm going to write it as it is simply because it was a solid which means that the ions did not dissolve in water they did not dissociate in water hcl did so if you put hcl in water the h plus one ions and the cl ions are going to separate and they're going to dissociate and they're going to mix in water they will be completely the two ions would be completely surrounded by water the next one is uh, mgcl2 it's also aqueous which means it's going to dissociate so you're going to get mg2 plus and two c lines i'm going to write this big two over here which would indicate that uh, the ions are now separate and they are roaming around freely in water they have mixed in water so so both ions are separate uh, remember you write a small two when the ions are joined together but it's aqueous so they have dissociated and the next one is water molecules water molecules don't really dissociate they don't really ionize they ionize very little. Remember, water does not ionize. Uh, or it ionizes very, very partially. So most of the water would remain just as water. So it's not going to dissociate. Only acid, bases, and salts, if they are aqueous. If they are aqueous, they're going to break down into their ions. So I've written the equation down in dissociated form. And this is uh, going to be my ionic equation, except for one thing. I need to remove a few things. 
Because if you look at this equation carefully, you would notice that some of the ions are not undergoing any change. And one of those ions, specifically Cl ions, look at Cl ions over here. They were roaming around in aqua state before the reaction. They're still roaming around in exactly the same state even after the reaction. These would be my spectator ions, which means that they are just busy watching everything else. All the other substances are undergoing a change. Nothing is happening to them. Look at all the other substances. MgOH2 changes into Mg2+, the OH goes somewhere else. H plus 1 changes into water. So every other substance is undergoing some sort of change. Cl minus 1 as it is before the reaction and as it is after the reaction. So what you're going to write and the final step of your ionic equation is you're going to get rid of these spectator ions. So writing the equation without these spectator ions is going to give you your net ionic equation. So finally, here is my net ionic equation. It's basically the same equation, but without these spectator ions. So this over here is my net ionic equation for the reaction.